caravan and pay today's uh, entry fee and get their bike scrutineered. I've been asked to remind you that uh, three races again count for trophies. Everyone entitled to ride for trophies. If you've had a change of bike overnight, of course, you're only eligible to ride purely for fun or for Somerset Championship points. Uh, if anyone can hear me on the track, perhaps you'd mend the tape as you go around. We've got one or two broken bits of tape. Try and mend it as you go by. Uh, there's water and I think some milk down at the caravan. So if you're a little short, come on down. I see Mike Chubb is here with number one gear. Uh, Brian Anir is still here. Bridge Garage and Mike Lehman, they're all helping to keep your running happy for the day. So make use of them. They're at various places on the campsite. I'd like to take this uh, chance to ask you and remind you again about picking up rubbish. Now, you're all responsible. If you've got rubbish blowing about or sitting around, lying on the ground near your vehicles or tents, pick it up, please. Don't throw it down. You enjoy yourself today. We're not here to just serve you. We're here to enjoy ourselves as well. And we don't want to spend a long time afterwards picking up uh, rubbish. Plastic, of course, the animals tend to eat. And uh, we've only got to have a, an animal uh, injured or something like that, and we could lose the track. So do be sensible about rubbish. There's a bin down the bottom. Bring it down here. When, as soon as the St. John's ambulance are here, we shall be getting underway. So last call for those who are for scrutineering and paying in. All right, thank you. Yes, one other thing. Uh, anyone not had a raffle ticket, they're on sale down here. Um, if they haven't been around to sell them to you, uh, try and remember to get down and buy a couple of tickets. It does help the general funds. Thanks once again to the people who've given us raffle prizes. Uh, the trophies are also on show, so you can now finally see how near or how far away you are from glory today. But whatever, enjoy your riding. We may just may have to colour code them like I told you and warned you about yesterday, but I shall do that on the line. I think today's gone very well. If you'd asked me the same thing last night, I would have, I would have, you know, almost despaired with the rain, solid rain all through the night, rain pouring in through the tent, thundery black clouds this morning. No, I would have said we would have had no racing the day, but it's come out gloriously, hasn't it? Now we've uh, it sure seems to. The track's dried out very quick as well, which surprised me. In fact, for such a hilly course, it's um, it's dried out extremely well, and the boys are all enjoying it considerably. Um, I don't seem to have noticed any injury at all today, which seems to be a step in the right direction. Young Simon Vickery has uh, damaged his knee, but and that was a pity because he was leading the experts and. Uh, that's cost him dearly, but... Uh, what number, what number did he write? 63. 63. 63 expert. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you, you were saying about uh, schoolboy scrambling in general. I think we're moving on to faster courses. When we first started uh, five years ago, the, the tracks were nowhere near as fast. They were a lot tighter. And uh, I think in many ways, this is a, a bad step forward. The boys are travelling at extremely high speeds. We're after more speed all the time, more and more speed, and uh, I think it can only lead in the long run to some nasty accidents, but uh, the pressure is on uh, organisers from every angle. They've not only got to find huge car, car parks and uh, for large vans yes. and power vans, it just shows how much money is available now for the sport, and the sport itself is, is becoming even more expensive. I'm talking to Mr. Tree this afternoon, and we were saying how much money a parent has got to invest in bikes. Um, my two bikes are, are probably costing me 2000 a year. And then there's the running and so on. It's, it's pretty staggering. If you, if, you really, if you really sat down and thought about how much money it was costing an average family, I don't think they'd do it. And I yes. certainly can't understand how anybody can start it. Yes, yeah, very true. Well, oh, let's put the two minute board in the split the ground. Two minute warning's up. The last six coming across. 
Here comes Gary Evans along the top straight. So, Gary Edwards, sorry, Gary Evans. I think he might be as good a rider as Gary Evans. Breaking for the Followed by Gary Mahone coming. Breaking very hard for the And Ricky Salway. Good point, but did you finish overall in the last race? Third or fourth? Hey, who got in front of you there? Because you were third for um, some of the race. Gary McMahon, Tim Cotton, Stuart Sewell, and Edwards. Ah. Uh, and you learn all those names. And when you're back in the fifth. <laughs> a wonder boy, was it? Yeah. Is that true? You finished that race first? Yeah. Did you get again? Oh dear, it's not right really. You ought to give the others a chance. Oh, oh well. Bloody sick of being second, he says. That's the trouble with it. Well, you've only got to try it a little bit harder. Oh, well. I think you try pretty hard, isn't it? You do a pretty good job. Do you like the course? Yes, yeah, good. Somebody was complaining. Ah. When he is, I have more bloody bikes this year than I've had shirts. Is this a new, another new Honda or the original one? The original one. The original one you have. What happened to the Yamaha? Like, you had a Yamaha a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. Go on now. Well, what other bikes you had this year? A Suzuki? Any, any bike like that? Yeah, this in the Yamaha. Oh, I thought you were another one. I rode it last year then. Ah, I thought you had a... Last year then. Ah, I thought you'd seen me on three bikes this year. No, no. You have. You've seen me on this one, but again. Then you've seen me at uh, NSZ2, then this catch one on this one. That's yeah. right, yes. That's right. I only rode that to three meetings, and I got rid of that. I just traded that in for the Yamaha. Yeah. And now uh, I'm riding this again, because I've got the parts for it. Ah, excellent. Because it's a damn good bike. Yeah, they don't handle, but they're good by it. Yeah, yeah. they handle I'm better a, than they did. I'm getting a pair of white power in it. Yeah. Do you think that's the two? Yeah, it's the back one's too soft. Yeah. That's my weight. Because we, I think, was it you there. yesterday, or was it? I come up there. Oh, the, the, the first get down, coming up there, somebody oh, was on the front wheel, yeah. yeah I think me. it was you, yeah. yeah. How the hell do you hold that? I don't know. It looks terrific from up here. But, uh, you know, skill overcomes some of those problems, but it's out of a disadvantage, isn't it? Because the bikes are riding up on there. Uh, what's your name again? Cheer. Cheer, that's right. That's what we're riding here. Not bad. Do you like the track? Yeah, very strong. Yeah, it is, isn't it? A little bit hilly for you fat boys, wasn't it? You have to get a bit out of the wind, you know, the top, actually. Yeah. No? Oh, it's alright on the downhill bits. Yeah. The uphill, you lose a bit and gain on the downhill. Yeah. Oh, have a nice day riding. Okay. 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 No tangled at all, down into the first corner. In the lead, number 41, followed by a near 17. 155 has now moved to second place. The piece to third. <coughs> One person tangled the last six.
Very nice day, though. Excellent, isn't that? Yep. Yeah. Are you feeling that way, look? No, that's as far as you'll get, I'd say. Have you seen it up there today? It's like a porridge. Yeah, I don't know porridge, but it's about two inches deep. I feel sorry for my car, yeah. caravan.
I think you did, I know. Coming up there in the dark, you must have been. Some said to me last night, he'd come up with the tractor and he said he pulled up one of these bloody great <laughs> yeah. on a chain about this size. He said, well, I said, what the hell is going on? He said, on your steering arm. I said, you fucking living that. No bloody way. <laughs> Yeah, on the steering arm, he said, oh, you've got a rod that comes around there. I said, you mean that? He said, oh, hang on, there he is. Hello. Bloody light. Oh, hell. Oh, we heard that you'd gone up the two you in, and we were sat in there quite happy. And we thought, oh, we'll wait, give you an hour to help you out. Yeah. Well, after about... Number 41, followed by a near 17, 155, has now moved to second place, but piece to third. <coughs> One person tangled with plastic, no, sorry, plastic tape. Some two bikes down on the first corner, doesn't look very good at all. Number 23, oh yes, he's on his feet again. I can't recognize the number of the other one yet. Yes, they're picking the bike up, number. 62. Yes, they're all right. They're away now. Joining the rest in the race. 155 has gone directly into the lead. I don't recognise the second man from here. They're going quite a way down the course now. Two words to Mr. Peaster. Who's your arch enemy today, do you think? Uh, Russell Peaster, isn't it? Yes. No. Isn't it? What's your name? Richard. Richard. Sorry, I'll get you mixed up with your brother. Yeah, what's his name? He's done very well yesterday. I think he was first overall in all three races, huh? Yeah. What did you come overall? Second. Second? Not bad. What about in here? Where was he then? Third. Third. I bet that upset him, huh? Yeah. His dad. <laughs> oh, don't worry about his dad. He's easy enough. How about you, Alex Buckingham? Number 56. What sort of day did you have yesterday? Fourth overall. Fourth overall? Yeah. Hmm. We'll try to do better today? Yeah. I hope low on the DC Uber. Ah, what number is Hooper? 41. 41, that's a fine number 41, and see what he says about Alex Buckingham. Mr. Hooper 41 we're looking for now. Can you see him on the line anywhere? Oh, just go up the other end, I think. It's rather a crowded start line. How many is on this start line? 34. 34. Uh -huh. Mr. Hooper, number 41. Your arch enemy today, I believe, is Alex Buckingham. I think he's going to try his best to beat you, is that true? Yes. You think he will? No. You're going to stop him, are you? Yes. Well, no dirty stuff on the track, I shall keep a careful eye on you.
into the gate now. Elastic's in the gate. So the second of line. All right. They're all the way. Everybody's left the line. Out right of the first corner. Number 26 into the first corner. 50 on the outside. 16. 60 is moved up to second place, followed by 90, 50, and 57. A very good start yet again. They're getting away from the start. Beautiful, even though it's only a short start straight. No trouble at all on the first corner this time. Such a lovely young age, it's a wonderful experience for us. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty bad, isn't it? Really, I was going to do it at least. Don't want to do it. When I started first, I bought my boy at 75 pm. And the reason I bought it was to get the boy used to riding riding a bike, motorbike, in difficult conditions, so that when he did get a bike later on in life, or a car comes to that, he'd know how to ride it and change gear and everything else. Oh. He'd have that instilled in an early age. Yeah, sure. Something that we never had in our youth, isn't it? You're definitely right. Never yeah. had a chance. I think it's a very good idea. I think perhaps if they race on the track, they're less likely to race on the road when you get a bag of the road. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I think yeah. it's also good in some way. Yeah, we just hope the school boy association and such just keeps going. Yeah. There's so many pressures to stop it nowadays and the difficulty of getting track. Hey, good, good day's good. racing. Okay. No clears, Gary. The car is going over there laughing. Running across to the car gate now, all the engines are running. 50 cc race, is it? Master's coming to the gate. In the gate, car is checking the line. Go away! Into the first corner. Number 12, followed by 14, 15, 24, and number 5 moving up on the inside.
when uh, Philip said to me, uh, this is your first scramble uh, junior meeting, what do you think of it? I said, well, I don't really know because I haven't attended one before. I used to attend bike meetings years ago. He said, well, have a look around the track, see how it impresses you, and then if you want, you can say a few words later. But what I've seen today has left me virtually speechless, which I'm sure you'll all find very gratifying. Number 14, Russell Buck. Well done, Russell. Come on, Philip, you know who you are. That's it. Unbooking. Fifth, Lee Williams. Get down. Steve Veneer. Colin Roberts. Well done. Been here for the weekend. And he's going very, very well in the BSMA. And he's going extremely quickly. Andrew Gilbert. Alex Buckingham. Been going extremely quickly today. Raymond Hooper. What well, time? Richard. Richard Peter. Pine carving posts and things about with his tractor. And uh, very, very much improved this rider in Poland. On we go now before the three downs. On that Honda going very quickly there. Steve Wendler. Going to. Well, I'm glad he served all of it at the end of the season. Well, well done. Cheers. Well done, Duncan. All the way up to Hong Kong. And uh, he's also another one we're hoping to bring back some major trophies to the different part of the world. Uh, Kevin Edwards. Well done, Kevin. Making that on the fly. After offering all the advice previously, but uh, if anybody, and he doesn't always have the luck that they deserve, and of course a, a lot of us suffer that, engine blowouts and bikes falling to bits and punctures and all sorts of things, and uh, it, is, it is nice to see somebody who goes so well in first place. Come on, let's give him a good hand, Gary McMahon, where is he? I can hear him muffling behind me, but uh, there's no denying it. Gary was the first rider, I, he probably doesn't remember it, but he was the first rider that we ever met in Schoolboy Scrambling, and uh, he's been doing it longer than we have. There are several families here that have been doing it longer than us, and uh, I don't know, sometimes it seems to go back into the dark ages. Well, I'd like to thank everybody involved in this, and uh, certainly for the, for the money. Thanks, Chris. I hope, I hope we, can, we can see you again <laughs> in the near future. Uh, John wants to say a few words to you, but if I can just finish by saying, go out of here carefully, have a safe journey home, don't go yet for a moment, John's got a few things to say, and uh, thanks for supporting us, I hope it's been worth your while, if, the, if we've had a few problems, let's, you know, think about them for the next time, and perhaps there may be a next time then. Alright, I'll hand you over to John. Yeah, they've just informed us it's Chris Shaw's birthday today. So I don't know if the boys all want to get hold of him and wish him a happy birthday. Where is he? Um, just before you go, sorry. just before you go, I'll man a few words. Anybody who knows me, and you know, quite sort of broke. Um, I think you'd uh, like to put your hands together in appreciation of the show that the Somerset Club has put on for us today. And yesterday, they ordered weather on the Friday to come to court and turn it away. Two days of excellent racing, and I'd like to say a short notice. Mr. Peter Sassy, with his band of men, did a wonderful job in a short, short notice getting this course over for us. I think we've all had a wonderful weekend. Our forests are a skeleton of their former selves. The bulk of Britain has been opened up for farming. Farmland is by now the largest natural home for wildlife we have left. But a wildlife habitat is generally what a farm strives not to be. Much of our wildlife has adapted to a landscape slowly changing over thousands of years. But can it cope with the modern farm, where the landscape alters drastically season by season, even week by week?
On this farm in the South Hams of Devon, there's an intricate mesh between the farmer and his wild competitors, his secret harvesters. A jackdaw and a sheep, wild bird, domestic animal. The plough, drawing behind it a following of gulls. There are moments of give and take. A rat and a barn. And far away from woods, or even from a hedge, a wood mouse living right in the middle of a field adapted to the field. To the wood mouse, this is an earthquake. the beetles and bugs, the millipedes and grubs, and even the earthworms of the soil. It's catastrophe. To a farmer, it's the oldest way of controlling the weeds and pests of his field. The plough, wreaking havoc in the earth. It chops and smashes pests. Some are buried too deep to survive while others are dragged to the surface and exposed to the drying wind and the hunger of the gulls. A wood mouse darts to avoid its predators leaping and bounding like a kangaroo. This is a sight one can see on any farm in Britain. The plough trailing its wedding veil of gulls. But it's an uneasy marriage. On the farm today, with the modern machinery, wildlife haven't got such a good time as what they did years and years ago. Everything is speeded up where the man used to go out and plough with a horse and plough, well, he might plough uh, an acre a day if he was lucky, but a, a man today can go out with a tractor and plough 20 acres in a day. The field is already finished, and at once, seed is going in. It's early autumn. So speeded up is the modern farm that much of the sowing no longer waits until spring. The farming year starts now. For wildlife, farmland is a chancy place to live, subject to both disaster and glut. This time, it's glut. Jays and some wood pigeons plunder the new sown grain. Wood pigeons now depend on the farmer to keep up their, their massive numbers. Members of the crow family arrive. Jackdaws, familiar profiteers of farmland. And a young rook. Even by night, the pillage on the new sown field goes on. The wood mouse, quite recovered now from the earthquake of the plough, locates buried seeds by its sense of smell.
Fortunately, the mice cause little damage to the final harvest, and they do eat a significant number of pests and weed seeds as well. Night after night, they'll dig up the grain, laying in huge winter stores, hidden in burrows or nearby hedges. At this time of year, the hedges are rich with food for wildlife. A comma butterfly feeds on blackberries. Soon, it will fold up its ragged, dead leaf-seeming wings and hibernate amongst wintry foliage. Juices oozing from the ripe fruit provide a nourishing meal. But there's more fruit and seed than just blackberries in the hedgerow now. Even this mobile curiosity is a seed, the notorious wild oat. Its jointed spikelets contract and twitch. Speeding up the action reveals just how it walks before it starts to twist its way into the ground. Wild oats are a scourge for the farmer, but each seed is a rich mouthful for foraging birds and animals. On farmland, new catastrophes for nature come thick and fast. The farmer, like anyone else, can see that it's a shame to cut back a 